What's up everybody and welcome to another video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Johnny. This is my bus, Miles of Smiles. And this is not just any video guys. This is the 50th video that I have released on this channel. So kind of a little milestone. And uh, let me tell you, we've got some exciting things to talk about here in this video. As you can probably tell by this title, as you can probably tell by uh, what I'm standing in front of here, uh, we got a kitchen to talk about and a lot has happened here. Maybe you've seen it on Instagram, I already released it there. Uh, if you don't follow already, go ahead and follow on Instagram. And of course, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button. If you ever watched one of my videos uh, and if you ever plan to watch more down the road, of course, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified when a new video comes out. So with this 50th video, I want to say I've set myself a goal. I've set myself a goal of hitting a thousand subscribers before my first major trip out of Wisconsin. Uh, and that is September 16th. So today is uh, July 30th and uh, September 16th is not that far away. So guys, Share with your friends if you ever found any value in this channel, any entertainment from any of the videos that uh, I have made. Please go ahead, subscribe, share with your friends. Let them know about the Miles of Smiles YouTube channel and let them know that there's exciting things ahead. So without further ado, um, we're going to go ahead and get talking about this here kitchen because I'm pretty proud of it, pretty excited about it. And uh, yeah, I don't even know what more else to say. Let's get into it. All right, so we'll start low and uh, go ahead and work our way up. So in a previous episode, you guys have seen how we went ahead and framed out these cabinets. Uh, we used two by twos and two by threes for framing. Uh, and would, this is what's called a face frame technique uh, rather than a frameless technique. I believe frameless would typically be made out of three quarter inch uh, plywood, all pocket hold together. No two by twos, no two by threes. Uh, went with this method just because I felt a little bit more comfortable making the framing this way and rather than making rather than making giant boxes out of three quarter that probably would have been less square than this which already was not very square which made it very fun uh, for various drawers and things like that so right here front and center we have our 105 quart fridge freezer combination. So either side of this can be fridge or freezer. Uh, probably gonna pr make the bigger side here a uh, fridge, other side a freezer. So the good thing about this fridge is it runs on 12 volt power. It can run on 110 as well, but I'm gonna run it on 12 volt so I don't have to convert or invert the power over to 110, lose some of that power efficiency. 12 volts is more efficient. And also I wanted to go with the chest fridge because when you open a chest fridge, not all the cold air comes rushing out. Cold air stays in the bottom. When you open a normal sideways fridge, all that cold air comes rushing out. So just another reason it's less efficient. And for me, uh, trying to keep as much 12 volt as I could and be as efficient as possible was really important. So found this one on Facebook Marketplace. You're gonna hear it throughout this episode, but Facebook Marketplace has been a great place for me to find a lot of lightly used items. This was used once by a lady who then didn't want it anymore and got it for 300 bucks cheaper than it would have been otherwise online. So basically brand new, 105 quart, 12 volt, dual zone, gonna be great. And I have this mounted on uh, 500 pound drawer slides, similar to the ones that we used for our couch design, which go ahead, watch the video here if you haven't seen the couch. But 500 pound drawer slides, plenty, plenty of resistance here, or holding power, I should say, and slides in and out with ease. Now I added some little latches here, just very simple latches to go ahead and hold it in while I'm driving. Holds it in nicely. Only thing I still gotta do is actually wire the fridge in, just connect some wires, and then we're good to go. Moving up here, got a nice wide drawer here at the top. This is gonna be used mainly for utensils, uh, but all of the drawers are 22 inch drawer slides, full extension, soft close. So uh, about 22 or a little under 22 inch deep drawers, which makes for a nice wide drawer. Now, while we're at it, you'll notice these copper handles here. These were actually something I made myself. So in the design phase, uh, wanted to go with this copper theme. I was originally gonna buy some copper hardware, but then I thought, you know what? Why don't I just buy some copper pipe, brush it up real nice, clear coat it so hopefully it doesn't varnish over time and uh, 
it made for some easy hardware. So this is just a standard copper pipe you would find at a store. I literally hand brushed it uh, with a uh, pipe brush that would, you would use to clean a pipe before you're gonna solder it. And then uh, I actually clear coated them. They're not perfect. We'll see if they hold up over time, but it was cheap. Just use you know, the pipe, a couple 90 degree elbows. And then inside the elbows is a little dowel rod that is glued in there so we could screw into something from the backside. So that's how these are fixed on here. I think they look great. I love the copper. I think it's underutilized, but um, great, cheap, effective. Oh, and I guess I should mention this guy here. So you'll notice this is a, what looks like a drawer face here, but it's just fixed. Uh, and that is because above here is the propane cooktop. Probably could have put a drawer under here or tried to get something under there, but I just didn't want to risk anything under the propane cooktop and I wanted to give it plenty of space for heat dissipation, things like that. And I didn't want things sliding in and out, potentially catching wires, propane lines back there, anything like that. So this is just a false drawer front. All right, so now we're a little bit farther towards the back here. You see guys probably saw these cabinets in the background, but again, nice copper poles. And then just a big cabinet, double door cabinet. You can see under mount sink here. Back here, I've got my water filtration and a bucket that everything's draining into right now. So I don't have the water plumbed out yet into the gray tanks, uh, but I do have functioning water pumping from my fresh water tank, which is super exciting. I'll show you that here in a minute, but pretty simple setup here under the sink. Maybe I'll make some kind of organizer under here or different shelves just to make a little bit more use of the space, but definitely a lot of space to play with under here. All right, and we'll move on to the top here, moving up to the countertop. But one quick thing, all of the drawer faces and cabinet faces you see here were made with three quarter inch plywood, just a single piece of three quarter, that was it. I was originally gonna do some shaker frames, but decided against it, and I like the look. So, moving on up, we have a nice butcher block countertop here. So I bought a 10 foot slab from Home Depot. This one is only about 84 inches long, so I cut this slab down, cut the holes out of it for the sink and the propane cooktop, which were potentially one of the more nerve wracking things I've done on this bus, because if you screw either of those up, that's a $300 mistake. So, it uh, was a little bit nerve wracking cutting the sink hole and uh, the hole for the cooktop here, but got it done and it looks good. So, I bought the butcher block unfinished and then finished it with some mineral oil actually, which is one of the most, if not the most, food safe um, surface cover coating that you can use. And it's not necessarily even a coating, um, more or less that it's just something to help protect the wood, help the wood not dry out. You can use polyurethanes and things like that that are food safe, but for me, I didn't want any chemicals near my food surfaces, so mineral oil was a great option. Uh, Howard's makes a cutting board oil product and a butcher block conditioner product, and that's exactly what I use. So it does take some maintenance over time, but literally all you have to do is every month or couple months, just wipe a new coat on and that's it. So super fast, you know, maybe a five minute thing between this counter and my other counter that I have to do every month or two. But again, for me, it was the best option and I liked that it didn't really add much of a tint. It brought out some of the grain in the butcher block, but didn't really add any sort of a tint to it. Maybe the slightest, slightest bit of a yellow color, but really not that bad at all. So you may be asking yourself, where the heck is the cooktop? Uh, you see a sink back here, and then there's this thing here. Well, this is actually the sink cutout. So one of the ladies who works here at the office where the bus is being built uh, came in one day, and she always, Shannon, if you're watching, uh, Shannon's always got some good ideas, and she's always talking to me about different ideas and things like that. Her idea was to make a cutting board out of the sink hole. So that's exactly what I did. And well, more than that, she said, hey, you should make a little one that covers your propane cooktop. So, you know, it just, I don't know, looks a little different, looks a little cooler, kind of hides it, looks a little bit more chic, whatever. And so I went for it and that's exactly what I did. So this is actually, it's actually just a cover for the propane cooktop. So what I like about this is I'm gonna be able to cut on this as a cutting board and not use this surface as a cutting surface. So hopefully my countertops will be much better protected or you know they're not gonna get cut up as much. 
uh, and I can cut on this and not really have to worry about it as much. So um, thank you, Shannon, for the idea if you're watching this. Here, I've got a two burner propane cooktop. I went with the Ramble Wood model on off of Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it below. Don't have this hooked up yet, so I can't actually cook anything yet. Still trying to get a propane tank. I'm trying to get an RV specific propane tank, but that's for the future. Just a nice simple two burner propane cooktop, nice stainless steel and black to go, uh, go with some of the rest of the contrasty look. Now, before we move on to my favorite part of the whole kitchen, we'll take you back to the sink here. All right, now let's move on to the sink and uh, it's no small sink guys. This is a, about a 26 inch by 18 inch, I believe, or don't quote me on that, maybe 16, 17 inch. Either way, it's a large sink, not quite a full size house sink, um, but boy, plenty of room to do all the dishes you need. And uh, obviously continued with the copper theme here, got a copper faucet and then also uh, filtered drinking water here. So. Like you saw below, those four filters uh, push out some nice clean drinking water. So this faucet, Facebook Marketplace. This sink, Facebook Marketplace. Both brand new, both cheaper than they would have been buying them from a retailer. Uh, so guys, I'm just gonna keep saying it. Check out Facebook Marketplace, use it to your advantage while you're building. There are plenty of people out there who get things they don't want them, realize it's not what they exactly wanted and that's ex what exactly happened here so the lady that bought this uh copper faucet it wasn't exactly the color that she thought it was going to be so she was getting rid of it so that's well, how i snagged it up another part i like about this sink and this is pretty minor but came with this little dish drying rack that just kind of rolls up here um so it'd be nice for doing some dishes down the road but officially have functioning water listen to that Oh yeah, uh, but again, not draining into anything, just draining into the bucket below. But yeah, that's the sink. And now on to my favorite part of the kitchen and really the most last minute addition to the kitchen. Uh, and that is this slate stone backsplash. So this was not in the cards. When Regan and I were originally designing the build, uh, we were gonna put a little chalkboard here we're gonna leave it white maybe hang some things up here but uh then my buddy nick got talking to me and was like oh, let's put some tile up there and then brought up the idea of slate and then i found this slate at home depot one day and it just has these reds and oranges and yellows in it that really go with the copper um, and with the trim and with the butcher block and everything so i love this i think it's a really unique piece uh of the bus and on Instagram, you guys received it awesome, which thank you to everybody who had said kind words about it. And I'm glad you guys were excited, as excited about it as I was, or as excited about it as I am, I should say. I'm still very pumped about it. Uh, this was my first time ever laying tile. I'd never laid mortar before, but thankfully uh, this is all interlocking. So I didn't have to do any grouting or anything like that. Um, I'm going to seal it with, so that way it doesn't soak up anything that's getting splattered or whatever from cooking. Um, but we'll see how it holds up over time. I'll definitely uh, keep you guys posted on that. But for now, it looks amazing. I'm so happy about it. And this underlit lighting we have here just provides some nice light, especially at night, and just makes it really pop in the kitchen. So love the backsplash, great addition. All right, and we've reached the top here uh, and we got our little cabinets. Now, these were something we built a long while back. Uh, you guys have seen the episode about it probably if you're followers of the channel. Um, but if not, let's go have a quick rundown. These are only about nine inches by nine inches. So it's a small little cabinet, but it's gonna be great for cans of beans, soup, vegetables, rice, pasta, things like that. Um, and these are all soft close hinges, so you can drop them from the top. Uh, and with these, all I did was make a face frame, this rectangle, and then this inner piece is actually uh, two different types of metal sheet from Home Depot. One that's got a little design on it, and then the other one with copper. So it ties in that copper theme all the way through. And I just put a little bit of uh, super glue on the back of the design one and super glued it to the copper 
and then screwed them all in from the back. So nice little amount of cabinet space. Um, didn't want them to be too intrusive. Wanted to keep them above the line of the windows and make sure that you know still was going to get all that nice sight out the windows and not feel like you were having to duck under the cabinets. Really let as much light in as possible while still maximizing some of the space up here. So that's the cabinets. Now, before I pop over and show you the little coffee bar we got going on over here, uh, I want to talk quickly about these trim pieces because, well, it's related to the kitchen and it's something I've pretty much gotten done all around the bus and I think looks awesome. So these are just pine trim from Home Depot. It's about three quarter inches thick and I got three and a half inch wide ones and one and a half inch wide ones. So here you'll see uh, I've got a single piece here and then a little piece coming over the lip and those are uh, glued and nailed together and then nailed onto here from the side. So in between all the windows, there's something similar, but it's basically a cap. So I took the three and a half inch piece, put it on the front, and then the two one and a half inch pieces, slimmed them down a little bit so they would fit, but I basically made a full cap, glued them all together, nailed them together, and then put the whole cap on here as one piece so that way I didn't have to put nails in the front of these boards. Because they're not painted um, and because it's just natural wood, well, with you know a little bit of natural stain and some finishing polyurethane, uh, I didn't want to put nails in the front of here. Even though it's small holes and, any, and whatever, I wanted the nails to go on the side. So that's why I created the cap first and then I just put two nails up here and two nails in the bottom. In some cases, I had to put one in the middle as well, but at least it's on the side and not in the front here. Those on the top meet up with a five and a half inch piece of that same pine board. Uh, again, finished with a natural stain and then a couple coats of polyurethane just to keep the life of it nice and long, hopefully. Uh, and then at the bottom, you can see same thing. Whoa. And then at the bottom, you can see same thing, uh, just a piece of that pine and it doesn't quite go and meet the window. You'll see I've got a piece of painter's tape here, and that's because I need to get like some type of gasket or you know, rubber vinyl quarter round piece that can go here so that way it doesn't just get dust and things falling back there. I don't wanna have to you know, try and blow them out. I already did that once, and so uh, the painter's tape will stay there until I can get another solution, but hopefully that should be pretty soon. Uh, either way, this trim makes it feel so much more like a home. Obviously, it still feels like a bus. It's got bus windows, but uh, it just really squares off the windows uh, and just kind of covers up a little bit of it, enough of it to really make it feel like it's kind of a home, you know? So uh, now that you learned about the trim, let's go over a quick look at the coffee bar. And last but not least, we have a little coffee bar over here on this side. So this is just behind our dinette seat over here. If you guys know the layout of the bus, you can see the dinette seat. Oh, sneak peek of the cushions there. That's coming. A few more cushions to be made, and then we'll talk about the dinette and the finished couch and everything. But anyways, uh, again, went with copper hardware over on this side, just continuing the theme of everything. Butcher block, uh, this is same butcher block slab as over there. As I mentioned, I bought a 10 foot piece so that I could cut this side and the other side. And then this is mostly gonna be used for, you know, some other kitchen stuff. I've got my dishes in here. And then this on the bottom, which I have to put this handle on still yet. Uh, just need to touch up some paint, but this is gonna be toaster oven, kettle, uh, maybe a small blender, things like that. So. It'll be nice, and even, I figure it's gonna be a nice little stand-up desk, too. It's kind of a nice level. Maybe we're gonna have to build it up a little bit, but kind of a nice little stand-up desk looking out, uh, and we'll give a nice option in case I don't wanna sit down at the dinette. And that's where we're gonna call it for today, folks. Uh, that's the kitchen, and that's where it stands right now. Pretty close to being done. You know, got some final touches, like actually making things function completely. But visually, this is pretty much what it's gonna look like and I am super pumped about it. If you're pumped about it, go ahead, throw in the comments, tell me your favorite part of the kitchen. Uh, tell me something maybe you would change if it was your kitchen. Um, tell me what you think about the backsplash. Tell me whatever, throw me a thumbs up. And of course, 
If you found anything helpful, entertaining in this video, please go ahead and subscribe. So much more good content coming your way. And obviously the, the build is nearing the end here, guys. And like I told you before, I have my first official uh, launch date out of Wisconsin. And that's only a month and a half away. So these videos are pretty quickly gonna turn from, uh, you know, finishing the build and getting it done and all the exciting finishing bits to exciting adventures and actually getting to live on this thing talking to you guys about what I'm doing with it, uh, what I'm doing as I'm living in it, how it's like living in it, uh, what you can expect if you wanna live in a bus. Um, so many things to come. And also, I mean, maybe a podcast, question mark? I've alluded to it before, as you can see, I already jumped the gun, went ahead and bought this mic. Well, maybe not jumped the gun, but got excited and that's how serious I am about it. Just making some more content, up in the quality of this content and uh, just trying to share with you guys all about this experience and have some fun along the way. So thank you for watching this video, guys. And of course, we'll see you on the next one.